This topic is on COPD, and it follows the NICE guidelines of 2019. COPD is a chronic and largely preventable disease. The main features of COPD are the persistent respiratory symptoms and airway obstruction that is generally not reversible. Sometimes, patients might have acute exacerbations of their COPD. COPD is the umbrella term that consists of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Patients usually present somewhere along the line and range between these two conditions. Emphysema is a pathological process that leads to loss of parenchymal lung texture, while chronic bronchitis refers to cough and sputum production for at least three months in each of the two consecutive years. Suspect COPD in patients who are more than 35 years old with at least one risk factors and at least one of these respiratory symptoms. Risk factors include smoking, occupational exposure, and genetic diseases like alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Symptoms include shortness of breath, chronic cough, sputum, and wheeze. The diagnosis of COPD is based on clinical features and spirometry results. We usually perform a thorough history and examination and quantify the extent of dyspnea and the impacts of activities of daily livings with COPD assessment test and an MRC dyspnea scale. Routine bloods like FBC should be performed where you can observe secondary polycythemia. Perform a chest x-ray to rule out other lung pathologies and do a spirometry where you can see an obstructive pattern. Other investigations to consider include ECG, peak flow, and sputum culture. Remember to consider alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency in patients younger than 40 years old or has a family history of COPD. The severity of COPD can be classified based on FEV1. All stages have FEV1 over FVC of less than 0.7, showing an obstructive pattern. However, mild COPD refers to FEV1 of more than 80% predicted. Moderate COPD refers to that of between 50 to 79%, severe between 30 and 49%, and very severe for less than 30% or less than 50% with respiratory failure. The management of COPD requires an MDT approach involving different specialties such as physiotherapists, occupational therapists, dietitian, and psychological services. It's important to educate the patients about the condition and to encourage to stop smoking. It's also important to encourage regular vaccinations, pulmonary rehab, and self-management plans, especially to look out for acute exacerbations. Sometimes, symptomatic treatments like anti-mucolytics can be prescribed as well. According to NICE guidelines, refer to the specialists if you suspect lung cancer, if there's any diagnostic uncertainty, for example, unable to differentiate between asthma, COPD, or bronchiectasis, very severe COPD or rapidly worsening COPD, core pulmonale, which refers to right heart failure due to a lung condition, if patients are less than 40 years old, have a family history of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and frequent infections. The management of COPD keeps evolving based on evidence and research, and it's important to make sure they are updated in terms of the COPD treatment. This stepwise plan is based on the NICE guidelines of 2019. Step one is to prescribe a SAMA or a SABA. If step one is insufficient, the next step is to assess for any asthmatic features or any evidence of steroid responsiveness. According to NICE guidelines, these features include past medical history of asthma or atopy, eosinophilia, substantial variation of FEV1 which is more than 400 ml, or substantial diurnal variation in peak expiratory flow of at least 20%. I'll first talk about if patients have asthmatic features or is steroid responsive. Step two for these patients will be adding an ICS and a LABA. This is quite similar to the management of asthma. Step three for these patients will be adding a LAMA, L-A-M-A, if step three is insufficient to control symptoms, refer to secondary care. 
For patients who do not have any asthmatic features or are not steroid responsive, step two involves adding a larva and a llama. Step three involves a trial of ICS for three months. If no improvement, refer to secondary care. Remember to always check for inhaler techniques and drug adherence as per asthmatic patients too. We have gone through the drug classes of SABA, ICS, and LABA in the asthma videos. SAMA, S-A-M-A, refers to shock-acting muscarinic antagonists. Examples include ipratropium. Examples of LAMA, L-A-M-A, the long-acting muscarinic antagonists include teotropium. Side effects of SAMA and LAMA are similar. As they are muscarinic antagonists, they reduce parasympathetic effects on the body. So logically, the side effects include arrhythmias, constipation, dry mouth, blurred vision due to dry eyes, and urinary retention. There are many other treatments that the secondary care can provide. These include theophylline, prophylactic antibiotics, long-term steroids, and long-term oxygen therapy. There are criteria that some of these patients need to fulfill before these medications can be prescribed. I'll be talking about the most important one, which is long-term oxygen therapy. This is the criteria for long-term oxygen therapy. Patients must be non-smokers. Giving smokers a pressurized oxygen system is generally a bad idea. On top of that, PaO2 should be less than 7.3 kilopascals when COPD is stable. Or PaO2 can be between 7.3 and 8 kilopascals with one of these followings. Secondary polycythemia, peripheral edema, or pulmonary hypertension. NICE guidelines recommend an annual monitoring and review of COPD. Twice yearly, if COPD is classified as very severe. During these reviews, it's important to check the MRC dyspnea scale, monitoring frequency of exacerbations, review inhaler techniques and adherence, check smoking status and vaccinations, spirometry, and to assess for any other complications, such as core pulmonale. In conclusion, it's important to know when to suspect COPD, know how to diagnose and stage the severity of COPD, and how to appreciate the obstructive patterns on spirometry. It's also important to know the stepwise treatment and to know the drug classes as well. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for more.